Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Sean here again for another bounty training. Um, this one's about getting a feel for things. So you've chosen your target, and instead of running your tools and trying to find files, directories, scanning for subdomains, this is about getting a feel for how their main web application works, what features are available to you, as well as that, but common things that you can test for to see how developers are approaching security. Now, with that said, you should expect to fail when testing a main web application um, in the sense of you expect them to have some decent security where potentially thousands of people are using daily. So you want to find things like cross-site request forgery tokens. You want to see um, no XSS. You want to see things filtered, etc. But there's a bit more to it than that, which we'll be going through. So... You're only going to need a tool such as Burp Suite for this. The community edition is absolutely fine. Um, another web proxy tool such as Fiddler is fine. As long as you can log and request the and see your request, it's absolutely fine. So this is literally, we're going to be getting a basic understanding of your target. So cross site request forgery things, protection in place, input validation, what's been filtered, etc. But as well as that, keeping an eye out for common features that will work literally in a certain way. So I've used an example there as webhooks because sometimes you'll find some websites have a developer portal where you can test test things if you're building an application and they, they offer you test features. That feature's designed to send a server-side request. Um, so as an attacker and your bug hunter, bug hunter that should say to you, okay, I'm going to sit here and I know how this works. This is what I should be looking for and what it's going to be potentially vulnerable to. So we're going to be keeping an eye out for features as well. So how do things work? So I want you to sit back and pick a target right now, a target you've never looked at. And maybe it's a, maybe they don't have um, a bug bounty program. It's fine. Just picture a well-known website that potentially you use and you know the features and things like that, but you don't know it too well. You just know of this website, but you don't know the ins and outs. So... Again, you're going to only need Burp Suite for this, getting a feel for things. Um, so you, you've chosen who, who your target is. Like I say, we're not. At, this is just visualizing this. Um, I don't want you to actually go and pick a random target that doesn't have a program and hack on it. This is just visualizing in the sense of it's new to you. You don't know how things work and you want to get to know how, how things work, what features are available, what does the website offer, different account levels, etc. So number one, input validation. So... What's filtered throughout the website, for example, when signing up, when creating an application, editing your profile, posting status updates, what's allowed, what's not allowed? So is it simply A to Z characters or can you add symbols, HTML tags and things like that? Now, a lot of time when you're testing this, you will find sometimes it's not vulnerable. I mean, you've, you've got your, you're able to enter your XSS payload, but it's not vulnerable at all. However, Think a bit deeper than that in the sense of if you can sign up with your first name with a HTML payload in it, even though it's not vulnerable when it's reflected, should that how is that developer actually approaching security in the sense that he's actually allowing someone to sign up with symbols in their name? So then that leads on to you thinking about later on how how does when some, if that, for example they've left that company um, or new code comes out for example. They might not be able to, um, they might realize, okay, this person's not actually filtering it when they sign up and he's actually allowing them to sign up with symbols in their name and they have your problems later on down the line. Um, I accidentally clicked a little bit too soon there with the cross-site request forgery one. Um, I actually thought a different part of the slide would come up. <laughs> so with cross-site request forgery protection, again, you want to assume that there is cross-site request forgery protection. You want to see that token, but it's about understanding how it works, what, what, what's actually required here. Um, and I'm going to move on from that because I'm gonna, there's a little tip after this that I will come back to the cross-site request forgery bit in just a second. But as well as that, specific features. So... If you're creating, if it allows you to create your own application and you can set your own permissions, OAuth permissions, open ID, that is a feature that works in a specific way. So you specifically know what you should be testing for with business logic, app, application logic flaws and things like that. Authorization, are the permissions correct? Do these access tokens expire or work correctly, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the same, especially when you're playing with developer tools. So, do you know what I mean, developer.example.com, and suddenly, do you know what I mean, you've got webhook testing, GraphQL explorers. 
these are all features that work in a specific way. So you should know, okay, well, can I get a bit more information out of this GraphQL Explorer um, than they intend, etc.? And is this webhook tester um, actually filtering me from being able to query for internal ports? Like, if it's this, is this request coming from their internal servers? Am I able to start seeing what internal ports are open? Can I see the response? And down the rabbit hole you go. But that's the specific feature. You know what it does. You're not guessing. Um, so I'm going to go back to the cross site forgery bit. So, like I say, look for the com um, common parameter and header names. Um, so you will see in Barker x cross site request forgery dash token. So that's actually used by Laravel PHP framework. So start looking into potentially are there any ways how how is this validated? Um, are there any ways to bypass this? Are there any ways developers can make some mistakes on this? And you can start testing the common things such as change the request type, remove the token, um, how often does the token expire, and things like that. So. You should expect there to be some security. Um, so, for example, if you're entering, editing your account information, changing your email, etc., this website should protect from that. But how have they done it? Um, and even if it is got protection, write little some notes down, especially if you're new, of how have they protected against this? Because especially as you continue going throughout the site, you may notice that different cross-site cross forgery protection has been used. So, for example, you might see cross-site cross forgery token as one parameter name and then in a different part it's actually just token and it looks a bit different because then you can start thinking why is this different what what's happening here are they not using the same code like module type library thing throughout it's like this is different code new code old code and you can start asking some questions then so i'm going to give you some examples um like i said in previously you can sign up with your name with html tag and sean but it's not vulnerable. But as a developer, you should not allow somebody to sign up with that in their in their first name. That's just not a good approach to security or coding, in my opinion, because you just cause yourself problems later on down the line. Um, so where did they forget to filter the name? Perhaps new code will come out one day that will cause it to be vulnerable. So the person who developed the pr registering of a profile like I say, he didn't val he only he validated it server side and just yeah said ah oh, we'll make sure it's not vulnerable when you reflect it. But they're actually storing your first name with that HTML tag, and then somebody else um, joins the company. They don't realise this and they re just use the database field the first name reflect it and you suddenly have XSS. And I've given an example there because I had this literally I've had this all these bugs and that on Barker and what I'm talking about are based on bugs I've actually found so I could sign up on a website with HT and I got me enough XSS payload as my first and last name it wasn't vulnerable throughout the desktop website anywhere not at all however as soon as I opened up their mobile app well I started having alerts come up and things so it affected literally just their mobile app um, and there we have a bounty <laughs> so cross site cross forgery protection um, I've spoken a little bit about this, but like I say, change the, the, the request type. So when, if you don't have a developer background, um, in PHP, for example, when you are handling parameters, you can sometimes, you, you, you choose basically, uh, depending on how you can code, you can get it globally, or what a lot of developers will do is they'll say, just get the request just get the parameter if it's in a in a get request or handle it if it's in just a post request and that's where you can start having some flaws when you literally just change the request type i know it seems like a basic thing but we even found a bug on one of the hack events where if we sent a get request to it it provided nothing but we changed it to a post request and it produced an error so it's something simple to try to see how different code executes and things like that um, sometimes developers will create their own filters for cross site request forgery so they'll verify the origin they'll verify the header but if this is null then that code doesn't execute and you can bypass it um, there is a little challenge on bug bounty hunter if you want to have a little go at that if you haven't already um, and again i found this um, on a target and it shouldn't have been vulnerable to it really um yeah i won't go more into that so specific features now this is this is really good especially for beginners because you're not having to go for the entire website um especially if time is against you if you have a lot of life commitments and things like that um 
look for just the specific features. And I've given some examples there where people have got server-side request forgery in webhooks. So again, these features are designed to do a specific thing, file uploads. That's that's their purpose, to upload the file, handle it, store it, etc. So with that in mind, you can you could literally imagine this, yeah? Go through every single target on Hacker One. Um, yes, we hack integrity, and if you just wanted to test for one vulnerability type, if that's your favourite thing, just literally test every file upload on every single target and see how they handle it. Because again, think about how the developer has to think about this when they're handling a file. By default, you're uploading a file. That that's what the code will do. But that's then when you have to then start um, writing security around your code as such with what files do i want to accept what file should i reject um how do i va validate what this file is do i want to just valid have an image where do they then store it and things like that um honestly i bet if you generally went for 100 programs and tested as many file uploads literally just file upload features that you could find on these websites i bet you would get a few bounties in my opinion um, and the same goes for all these developer portals they have so if you literally found the developer portal on every single bounty program and tested what they allowed you to make like applications webhooks etc um, etc et there's probably going to be something out there so you're literally acting like a mystery shopper so if you don't know what a mystery shopper is mystery shoppers are people that will they're hired to go into a shop and act like a shopper and see, uh, they act like a customer and see how it's like. Are they nice to people? Are the right things um, on the shelves, etc., etc. So you're a mystery shopper. You're literally just seeing how things work, getting a feel for the site, writing lots of notes. So can you sign up with this? What happens when you do file uploads? When you see um, a redirect parameter, how are they filtering this like again that gives you an overall feel for their security because if they don't care about an open redirect like they're simply happy for a return param a url parameter to go anywhere they want yes to a lot of people okay that's harmless that and if that's their approach to security well it's harmless it's just an open redirect it's giving you instantly a feel for well okay if they don't care too much about this, you hold on to it because it might be useful in a chain later on. You might be able to leak some tokens. It might help you in a server-side request forgery and things like that. Whereas if you were testing it, for example, on Google and you saw that you weren't at, I mean, their, all their return URL parameters were locked down to their domains, then it's giving you another sense of, they're giving you another overall sense of, okay, these guys care about security or has somebody been there before? and can you maybe break that patch um so yeah that's basically um the talk so getting a feel for things um testing validation seeing the basic cross site quest forgery and testing the specific features um if you literally stick to one target or again if you go down the route of testing specific features across lots then you will find bugs because there are bugs out there literally i mean look at amazon's live event recently um that's a heavily tested website. Lots of people use it. And I still managed to finish top five from testing their main web app. And we actually did this on a hack event. Um, there are still bugs out there. <laughs> so if you have any questions, queries, feedback, then feel free to let me know. Um, and yeah, happy hacking, everyone, and take care.